We're going to do something that we've not done on Christmas Eve since I've been coming here since 2000, and I think it's going to be a real treat. We may mess it up, but we're going to do it, and it's going to be amazing. I love it. I told them I didn't think you'd need me to stand on stage because I'm really tall and everybody can probably see me. And I probably really don't need a mic because me and Greer have to outscream each other at least once or twice a week. So, you know, I can get that voice going too. But um, for many of you that might not know me, this was a church home to me. All of my Bible stories that were instilled in me in Bible school and Sunday school, Miss Rose taught, uh, Miss Mona Payne taught, um, Diane taught. I've been taught by my grandmother, which is Anita Weathers and everybody, but, uh, and then my mother, she's taught Sunday school here, I think, most all of my life, if not more. But um, for a few of you, you don't know Billy Travis. I know some of you may know that name. Some of you probably don't know Frank Moore, but those were my dads, and they were equal. They were loved just the same, and um, one would have been sitting, well, we'd been in another church, but one would have been on the second pew, and Uncle Ed would have been on the third or fourth one, depending on whether he wanted to gossip with Frank or with Billy, and Billy would have been about row five or six, and he would have been having to talk about what all was going on. So I had a unique experience that God blessed me with two great, great families that instilled the love of Jesus Christ with me. And along with that, I always heard my dad say, I want to go to Israel. I want to go with John Hayden. I want to go to Israel. And sometimes we don't stop and do what we should do if that's something that's being called into life. He never went. But I will promise you that every tear I shed going across the Sea of Galilee he sat right there next to me. So um, we got to take communion at the garden tomb. And all of these cups are made from olive tree and olive wood over there. They're hand uh, cut. I know there's fancy words for that, but anyway, somebody cut it. But it was all done by hand. And this is how the people of Israel, the citizens, a lot of them make their money, is by the tourist industry. And so... Lord laid it on my heart that these would stay with this church in honor of my mother and her service here and in memory of my dad's. So I told him I don't care if you keep them in the box, having a box made for them, but um, they'll stay with this church for those family members that instilled that in me. And if anybody has a desire to go, don't wait. Because everything you hear on the news, the propaganda, it's a lie. If you believe everything they say about President Trump, or if you don't believe it, it's only half true, either way. So everything you hear about Israel is probably not true. So we loved it over there. We loved Jesus Christ. We loved the Jews. Pray for their peace. It's what you're commanded to do in the Word. And the Scripture doesn't lie. It doesn't change. He put his finger on that land, and he drew Adam out of the dust. And all I can say is when you walk over there, it's holy land. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to your pastor. Thank you so much for letting me do this. And um, I appreciate y'all giving me your time. I'm not exactly how sure how we're going to do that when we get there. But let's do the service part of it first, and then we'll figure out how we want to come. We talked about everybody sitting down, but I'm looking at the number of cups, and I'm wondering if we need to make more cups and the number of people. So we'll... I've got a few more minutes. We'll, uh, we'll fight that battle when we get there. This is going to be a little bit like Simon says, except it's Jesus says. We're going to do it off the screen. I did this real quick this afternoon, trying to give us something different for Christmas. And uh, I hope that y'all can follow along. And when it says pastor, that's me. And it says it's all, it's you guys and me. So here we go. Let's have a little quick prayer first, though. And <clears throat> dear Father, we do thank you for your son. And the promises he made, which he fulfilled. We thank you for his death on the cross, and we thank you for this time to remember that. Even though this is a time where we're talking about his birth and, and how magic that was, he was born for a purpose. 
You know, it, it sounds horrible that someone was born to die, but he was born to die for us. And Lord, I just pray that we take tonight seriously, reverently, and understand just how much he loves us and what he did for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this season of expectant waiting, we're invited to Christ's table here and now. Coming to Christ's table is a way to experience the grace of God. Therefore, it is open to all. The only requirement is a sincere heart. The only barriers to the table are created in our own heart. So we come together as a people to confess our sins to God. We confess as a people because we all, shook our, all fall short of God's plan of perfect love. We do not confess to avoid punishment. <coughs> We confess to free our own hearts and minds so we may remove the barriers we build between ourselves, our God, and our brothers and sisters. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We go about our lives as if Christmas is an event to be celebrated but not lived. We hear the good news but do not heed it. We turn away the Holy Family for there is no room in our hearts. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive, Forgive us and all free us for joyful obedience. obedience. Remove, Remove the barriers that we construct and empower us to be a people doing the real, greedy, holy, graceful, loving work of Christmas every day. In the name of the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Amen. The Christ child was born in the midst of darkness. The waiting is over. Christ may be born today in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Joy to the world. The Lord we be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Now let us give thanks to the Lord our God. How good it is to give thanks and praise. It is good to give our thanks and praise. It is good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created the world from chaos by simply speaking, yet you set the cosmos into motion and created all things from the dust of the stars. Blessed are you, O God the Father, creator of heaven and earth. God of many blessings, you called out a family to be a blessing to all the families of the earth. You gave them a land and promised to make of them a great nation so that all the nations of the world could be blessed. Blessed are you, God of Abraham and Sarah. God of salvation, when the people were but slaves in Egypt, you called upon your servant Moses. He gave him the power to speak salvation to the Pharaoh and led your people out of slavery. You led them over the water and helped them pass over into freedom. When the people were hungry, you gave them food from the sky. When the people were thirsty, you brought forth water from the rocks. And when the people were no people, you gave them the law. Blessed are you, God of our salvation. When the people asked for a king, you anointed David to be a just ruler. Though flawed, David united the people, and you promised to be with his line forever. When the kings rebelled, as you warned them that they would, you anointed the prophets who called the people back to obedience. The prophets spoke the truth to power and called the people to remember who and whose they were. The prophets warned the people of consequences of injustice and false worship. When the people fell into exile, the prophets spoke words of hope and restoration when all around them there was nothing but despair. You promised the coming of the anointed one who would lead the people to peace and righteousness. You promised that the descendant of David would rule forever. You promised that out of Bethlehem would come the Prince of Peace. You promised the coming of our kingdom when swords would be beaten to plows and spears and green hooks. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We come to be transformed by what has already come, and waiting with hope for what is to come. We deck our halls with joy, but it is in our hearts that truly matter. Prepare the way of the Lord in our world. Prepare the way of the Lord in our communities. Prepare the way of the Lord in our churches. Prepare the way of the Lord in our hearts. And so, in hopeful anticipation, we give thanks to you, God of creation, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of salvation, God of love. God of King David, God of the prophets, God of hope and deliverance, God of John, and God of us all. We join in praise and come together to sing unending hymn of saints and glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are shining bright with the glory of your light. 
Loud hosannas now we sing, in the highest they may ring. Blessed is the coming one, Christ Emmanuel, your Son. Glory in the highest, holy God, your name is blessed. Holy are you and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ, who is in the Word made flesh. Holy are you and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who is the one to whom John pointed in the wilderness? Holy are you, and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who was born to us in a manger, for there was no room in the inn? Holy are you, and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who came to show us the way to your love? He proclaimed good news to the poor. He restored the sight to the blind. He called the children to his side, taught the women, ate the sinners, and called out the religious leaders, blinded by the letter of the law. Holy are you, and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who was betrayed by those who loved him, who was persecuted by those who feared him, who was crucified by those who thought that his death would be the end of him. Holy are you, and holy is your Son, Jesus Christ. Who on the night in which he gave himself up for us, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and said, Give it to your disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come, come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make us a Christmas people, secure in what has come, and hope for what is yet to be. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Keep us vigilant in our advent waiting until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Dream where you go. She's so, she's so tall. Yeah, if you'll just hold that. We'll figure out something to do this. Let's just do what we traditionally do. That way we don't make a mess in the church. And I need my Molly and her thing. There's a basket. That's my best basket girl. All right. Um, who, Ken, are you here? Can you direct some folks? And if you'll get them to come line up across the ocean, there we all are. And if you would say, the body of Christ spoken for you, and if you would say, the blood of Christ shed for you, every time, can you do that? Yeah. Either, either way. Okay. Mr. Roger.
Let us pray. Dear Father, we, we come as the family of Christ, and tonight we think about that first family of Christ. Wow, what an amazing journey they made to go to Bethlehem and have that child. And Lord, just as we journey in our lives, help us to understand that their lives weren't easy, and ours will not be either. But you will always be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ shed 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 for you. shepherds. We, want, we stared at wonder as to why you would choose the lowliest workers, but you know, you knew that those would be the ones that would carry the gospel message. But we ask you that you would use us just the same. Bless us, Lord, this Christmas season. In Jesus' name we pray. 